I'd like to really thank uh, the committee for the Anti-Abbas Conference today. It's a pleasure to be here, and Imera and Emilia Saj for hosting us, um, our translators. And thank you um, to all of you for attending. Um, again, my name is Yana Sharek Hernandez. I am a faculty and a researcher at the at UCLA at the Center for uh, Labor Education and Research. Um, which is a kind of hybrid, multidisciplinary center where we look at issues of low-wage work, issues of borders, and also, in particular, I've been, for the last 10 years, working um, with communities, uh, undocumented communities in Los Angeles, and prior to that, actually, with undocumented workers globally. Um, I'm very much interested um, a, in understanding uh, how we can look at borders and the economics and the problematic of how much things cost and um, how we control borders through laws, policies. But I'm very much interested in looking at the actors who are affected by those policies and potentially how they um, can play a role in influencing and responding and resisting these policies. Um, so today I'm going to share um, some of the um, yeah, the work of young people that I work with every day in Los Angeles and across the United States. Um, some of the thinking around how uh, we look at social movements and the ideas of what is a social movement organization and how can those movements and processes and social processes and organizations influence um, the uh, immigration and border policies of the U.S. in particular and open up the dialogue to seeing how that might be possible in other parts of the globe. Um, before we begin, I would just love to see how many of you have heard of the dream movement or dreamers. Okay, this idea of dreamers. Is this a very new idea? I see a few hands. Okay, so, um, so I will begin just to um, frame a little bit that, uh, you know, I'm looking at this idea that Taro um, brings to us about social movements, you know, as a collective challenge of people coming together around a common purpose to challenge um, policies of power, uh, the elites, potentially opponents, and other authorities. And um, trying to understand then what kind of organizations who are challenging these policies, you know, what kind of identities and goals do they have and how do they actually do this. Um, so uh, I'm going to begin actually with uh, Two stories, very recent stories, maybe some of you have seen this in the news, but these are border stories um, of young uh, activists, students, undocumented young people who um, have been living in the United States pretty much most of their lives uh, since the age, I will show some figures later, but majority come at the age of eight, seven to eight years of age, and um, pretty much are grow, grow up, go, attend public schools uh, in the United States as undocumented people without documents. Um, this was uh, just a few months ago on the Arizona Nogales border, um, an intervention called the um, Operation Butterfly through one of the, um, actually the largest uh, immigrant, undocumented immigrant organiza national organization called uh, United We Dream. Um, this movement was uh, bringing together three students who organized a very uh, visible uh, media campaign and a very visible social media, um, uh, different kinds of um, events throughout going to the border and reuniting with their parents, um, in this case with their mothers. So these three um, young people actually you can see are here at the fence of the Nogales border, reuniting with their mothers who had been deported some five, seven, ten years ago, um, and reuniting with them for the first time. Um, this was actually on the um, front page of the, uh, L the New York Times. That one picture to your left was on the front page of the New York Times. Um, and the other picture actually has been in some of the more progressive magazines and um, United We Dream websites and so forth. Um, I wanted to share part of what we uh, think about when we, uh, I've been working as um, 
but Ginny mentioned doing a lot of narrative analysis, looking um, at the writing and storytelling and counter storytelling of undocumented youth, um, is to kind of frame who, who are we talking about who are influenced by these policies. Um, this is uh, Renata Teodoro, she's actually from Brazil, she's a undergraduate student at UMass Boston. Um, she is undocumented, she's in the process of actually applying for DACA, a deferred action, which I'll explain what that policy is in a moment. Um, she is a dream activist, I will also talk about what dreamers are for I think only two or three of you who know. Um, and uh, she is actually a social media commentary and a strategist who is very much using social media and journalism and her gift for writing to actually promote what's happening at the border um, and the separation of families. Um, this is, uh, was from the New York Times perspective, the pictures that were shown, you know, um, very much of a, a reuniting the kind of drama of separating families. Um, they mentioned to some extent the social movements, they had a little bit of discussion about that Renata in this case was um, part of a larger organization, but more around the sort of human tragedy of separation. Whereas in many other media outlets and in many of the other, um, the whole identity of Operation Butterfly, what is Operation Butterfly, what are we doing, Why, what is our purpose as young people to question and critique policies was much more salient. Um, and so I will continue to talk a little bit about how art and how imagery and this creating a social movement of young people, there are around 2.1 uh, million undocumented youth between the ages uh, uh, in the United States today. I'll show some figures, there's uh, distinctions. Um, these are young people who are attending high schools, they are um, in universities, and they are actually, you know, have grown up and their identities are in the United States. They uh, have resources and tools and understand the social organizations um, in the United States and therefore are using many of the tools that they have learned about um, in those institutions. Um, I have shared with Cedric and I'm very looking forward tonight to the exhibit opening. Um, there is a whole cadre of artists working on critiquing and working with young people around um, the mass deportations that have actually increased by 72% in the last six years under the Obama administration. Um, this is Fabiana Rodriguez. She um, is a well-known Chicana um, artist from the San Francisco area who has created uh, a whole campaign with young people around this idea of butterfly, the butterfly campaign, um, migration being beautiful, critiquing this idea of the deportation and separation of families, and seeking different kinds of uh, immigration and border uh, changes. Why are we spending so much money on intervention? Well, in a few moments, I'll talk about detention and some other things. Um, so this um, butterfly motif, while it was maybe not so discussed in the New York Times article, and people have not heard about it, dreamers, or the undocumented youth movement, which is the dreamers, as they are called because of uh, different kinds of legislation called the DREAM Act, um, are using this metaphor of the butterfly, of migration in many, many different ways, um, on their own websites, in rallies and protests, on banners, um, on t-shirts, and this has become part of really the symbol of a youth movement rising um, as a way to critique um, having their family separated, their brothers and sisters detained in the workplace, uh, put in jail, uh, in detention centers, which are definitely being um, subsidized and part of a huge corporate um, agenda. Um, so this is actually Julio Salgado. He is probably one of the most famous right now up and coming artists in Los Angeles and in the United States looking also at queer, LGBT, and undocumented youth issues. He's been working with Fabiana and many other art artists on developing a whole narrative around um, creating um, images that will resonate with the general public, but also build a movement. So young people will actually resonate with these images and create then um, their own art and their own forms of using 
the butterfly. This is actually this past uh, May, May Day, which has been a, uh, a large, you know, of course, worker uh, day globally, but has been really appropriated by immigrants, immigrant workers in the United States since Labor Day is another day. They've taken May 1st and used it as a way to talk about immigrant rights and critiquing um, border policies. Um, so I am um, very much interested in, in seeing how young people have been continuously uh, you know, framing the debate, and they are framing the debate. They are actually holding uh, meetings with senators, with their legislative officials. They are um, all different sorts of social protests, which I will share with you. They um, have made a real mark in many of the new kind of policies, especially a particular piece of legislation called um, the Deferred Action, which I'll get to in a moment. So, um, just the next story. So that's the first border story, this reuniting of mothers at the border. The second, which um, some of you might have heard about, is a um, really a border story. This is nine, they were called the Dream Nine, the uh, Dream Act students, this legislation that would actually provide a citizenship, a pathway to citizenship, rather, for undocumented youth, which has not been um, you know, it's about 12 years now, 13 years now that this has been trying to get passed. Um, but these are nine young people who were on the Nogales uh, border actually self-deporting and um, self-deported themselves to then be self-detained as an act of social protest. Um, this was just uh, uh, in July. This is very recent. These are actually walking through the streets of Mexico, approaching the U.S.-Mexico border. Um, with a large media team, observers, political observers, uh, uh, lawyers, and so forth. Um, so this is sort of this other kind of act of self-deportation out of the desperation of the increase of, of uh, deportation of their loved ones, of seeing more and more uh, immigrants detained in the United States, the, and no movement on the immigration front um, as far as immigration reform, very little. Um, very few avenues for uh, relief. Um, and here, are the, uh, these dreamers, you can see that's actually the uh, Nogales Porta, the, um, the, the wall there. They are just about to cross here, um, seeking, in this case, they were seeking um, asylum, uh, and they were all detained and actually brought to the, first to Florence and then to the Eloy Detention Center. And for 17 days held, many of them held in, um, three of them held for most of the time in solitary confinement. Um, this is not just singular acts. Many times the media portrays it as singular acts. These young people had also done a sit-in with in one of the um, congressmen, uh, excuse me, Senator McCain's office in Arizona. They've done many uh, different kinds of uh, acts of civil disobedience, social uh, protest. Um, and so this was, uh, you know, part of a larger strategy. Artists had played, were already aware of this. They, this picture was taken right before they went across the border. It was then sent out and the theme and the tweets was, let us bring them home, allow us to come home. This is Julio Sagalo's work. He immediately sort of is part of the uh, organization of these uh, young people's uh, demonstrations and then creates this kind of artwork where he will send it out and um, oftentimes it reaches the desks of politicians as well. Um, some of you may have heard, but well, uh, so as I mentioned, there are these increases in deportations. Young people um, are very savvy, have been very much keeping abreast of all the politics, what's going on. They actually meet with their Congress and senators often in California and the states where there's large uh, uh, concentrations. This was actually um, one of the decrees is the Morton Memo, which um, speaks about that the detentions of, uh, would be really for criminals or uh, immigrants who have had some kind of criminal background. Part of this whole movement of actually the students going to be self-deported or to be detained was one to, of course, make in the past example a public statement, a media statement. The other was to really say thank you to say, um, you know, we are going to actually, from the inside, document what's going on. And they have been able to get out information about that the majority of the detained are not criminal. Um, and they are there because they were at work, or they were um, 
So these are just, um, there's a, a rise in an anti-immigrant environment. Um, you know, the numbers um, have increased 72%. Around 1.7 million undocumented uh, immigrants have been deported in the last six years. There's an increase of different kinds of policies where uh, secure communities, different agreements where you can deputize police to become INS or the um, uh, immigration officials. These have been many of the reasons that um, young people and um, immigrants alike have been uh, critiquing and challenging this. Again, um, just actually right before I was, uh, in the last week there was this, uh, a large report that came out around the detention centers that there's a, a new policy that we just found out about that Obama has been saying that the uh, board enforcement must have 34,000 detainees at all times to be able to create uh, a uh, economy around this to sustain these uh, large detention centers. Um, this was just a, a U.S. Uh, report just came out on this um, that they're um, are costing about a two billion dollars a year to maintain um, young people and their parents, pretty much undocumented people, in these prisons. There's um, some that hold more, up to 1,500 people at a time. Um, so in this case, for example, this is just an example of some of the uh, social media uh, outward. This is called Los Mobiles. This is a quite an innovative using your cell phone to document abuses of uh, workers, but also of young uh, activists and undocumented students to put up online this campaign to bring home the, and, and to release the detainees from the, uh, from the detention center. Um, I'm going to just share a few uh, quickly because I have now four minutes. Um, a little bit, so the DREAM Act, this is why the Dreamers are called the DREAM Act, uh, the Dreamers, because of the DREAM Act. This is a, um, a piece of legislative that has been uh, attempted to be a complement to immigration reform in the United States. It has not passed. It almost passed in 2010. It passed actually the House of Representatives and then did not pass the Senate by only five votes. Um, this was a huge disappointment. Young people were really part of this. They had a mass campaign to lobby their legislators, um, to go to Congress, to do acts um, in Congress, outside of Congress, on the borders. And when this failed, um, we saw a real uprising of organizations coming to bear. These are just a few of some of the uh, undocumented, led, and more mainstream uh, immigrant rights organizations that are supporting undocumented um, communities to seek uh, immigration reform. Today there are about 450 more or less youth-led, undocumented youth-led uh, organizations in the U.S. Um, we, to give you a snapshot of what the numbers are, we heard from Dieter a little bit, there are, uh, we're just going down, is 41.7 million immigrants live in the United States. Of this, the numbers are increasing according to the recent uh, Pew Research Center. It's rising a little bit again, but 11.7 million undocumented, about 28% of the full immigrant population, foreign born population. 4.4 of these are under the age of 40, uh, 30 rather, and um, 1.7 are um, young people who are DACA eligible. This is a deferred action, a kind of policy, and I'll skip over this too quickly, and we can maybe have questions after, but where just in uh, last year, it's just been one year where young people can actually, uh, undocumented people can apply to, for two years to not be deported and to get a work permit. Um, right now, to this day, about half a million young people have actually applied and qualified to be protected under this. Um, so, yeah, 60% six, of undocumented people live in six states. We kind of mentioned that Texas and Florida, California, New York, and Illinois being the heavy ones. I'm going to skip over this because I wanted to just give you a, uh, an idea of most undocumented youth really come. Some of them come as undocumented, crossing a border or crossing, um, thank you. And um, others are very much, um, you know, overstay their visas, um, become undocumented in that way. They're really not aware often of their status until young adulthood and then their consciences are raised around that. 65,000 um, undocumented students graduate every year from high schools 
And about 5% of these go on to higher education, and many of them are my students. Um, in colleges, the, the, the population varies because uh, there's often a perception this is mainly a Latino community, but there are also very many Asian Pacific Islander, Asian American communities, um, smaller numbers, but more really highly represented in universities. Just a few ideas here, and then I'll stop. But these are just some photos, and I'll go through quickly, of different kinds of um, ways that I've framed what are the different kinds of protests or social protests. There are multiple cultural acts um, using the arts as a way to form social protest at rallies, um, creating t-shirts. This is actually a sign that you see often in San Diego of young people crossing the border, but it's been reframed of students graduating from college and beware of those bright young people. He's actually a leader of the immigrant rights movement. There are moral and memorial and religious acts of protest. Uh, this is actually San Diego border, um, creating different kinds of acts of protest through religious means. Um, there is a lot of educational outreach that young people do, and this has quite been very influential, particularly around um, doing trainings within their own community and then trainings to their teachers, to their professors, to their colleagues, to people who don't know about the undocumented, writing books, creating movies. There are many films. So if you Google at some point Dreamers, the Dream Act, um, you will find this. They're t t educating one another um, through their social media networks of how to not be uh, frauded by very, there's a whole group of lawyers that do a lot of fraud against families and, and take a lot of money for them to try to fix their immigration status. A lot of civil disobedience, sit-ins, coming out marches, um, all sorts of national coming out days that mark uh, young people and their families uh, seeking immigration relief. These are um, the DREAM Act activists at rallies. Um, they have closed streets and they've made uh, federal buildings, they've closed those. There's been hunger strikes um, that have been very visible. This is actually in front of Senator Feinstein, a California senator office, taking on the ACT UP, the AIDS uh, sort of activism of the 70s, 80s, 90s, the die-ins. There have been um, sit-ins within the Senate buildings in Washington where young people have been arrested. That is actually... Um, dressing up as graduates in their gowns, cap and gowns, and being arrested. Um, acts of civil disobedience of actually going in and becoming arrested with a group of lawyers that then help them to get out. But they, these have become very visible and they've actually met with Obama. And um, this is a very recent, this is just a few days ago, was, or a, 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 yeah, about a month ago, where now parents and youth are becoming um, united to actually this is the, Wash the uh, White House uh, wall where they're, and you can see some of the artists, Shepard Ferry, the famous kind of iconic uh, poster, um, and different posters um, being used by other artists to really uh, build this campaign. These are all undocumented parents who are now becoming part of this because they're tired of seeing their young themselves, their family members, and their young folks being detained. And I'll just end with the last um, sort of slide here. Um, some of you may have seen this, but this is not being used as much, but these are the shackles, these are the detention sort of devices that are being used, and this picture is pretty much on every single young person's website, um, Facebook page, of, of a well-known Matias Ramos who was detained as he was going to a meeting, um, he was in deportation proceedings, but because of the DREAM Act movement, because of his uh, networks with young people, with other organizations, he was able to, uh, to um, stay in the country and um, seek, he did not get asylum, but he is seeking administrative relief. So, um, I'll end just saying that I, I, I'm we're very much moved and um, influenced by the way young people who are uh, part of a, a large dream movement, which we do see, and I would say is a social movement, and it's directly connected to the restrictive immigration and border policies that once were uh, circulatory uh, paths of migration, now have been restricted. Parents and young people are forced to stay, cannot go back to their countries of origin. Therefore, there have been these responses. And finally, that young undocumented youth are challenging the, the policies because they are mobilizing the same tools that they're learning in the schools about democracy, about Martin Luther King, about civil rights, about social protests. 
that they've learned in school in the United States, they're applying it to their own activism to critique um, policy. So 